Hello, hey guys, hey y'all, hey guys, this is Rick. You know what? I am not getting anything done. I think somebody's going to be getting mad at me soon. I'm just going to see how it works, how I handle it. But uh, basically, I think I'm uh, one of those stories, you know, where everybody's up there just farting around, and you know, I'm up there hanging out with Jethro and Lebon. You know, and just having a good old time. Uh, I'm like that uh, the Mary and Martha story where Mary is running around really fast, boom, 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 and has a banquet to, to get prepared for. And there's, and there, uh, uh, which is one of it, Martha is probably Martha is the one running around zip zing, you know, and Mary's over there being real sweet to Jesus. She says, Jesus, make, make her help. I got things to do. And he says, I'm not going to make her do a damn thing. She's doing just what I want her to do. Alright? Or, it's actually her choice, but that's how you serve the Lord. You basically do nothing. <laughs> well, it's wound up that way, except that I've been using mine more for, like, learning more things. And you guys, you guys are going to kill me. I just know you are. And, you know, and I'm beginning to wonder, if I talk about these, these stories, these uh, nursery rhymes, does taking the child stories does that take away from the code does it take away from um, the importance the importance of it because well, here you are seeing it in this you know uh, you know when people had this code for uh, you know that they could they could do something they could match numbers up and they could make prophecies out of the Bible you know the Bible code itself you know this came before me way before me way before this I should say where they could kind of like match numbers up and know, do things and create things, you know. Uh, but, well, you know, that's pretty interesting that the, that they could do that with the Koran and that they could, you know, predict stuff, you know. I don't know how interesting. I mean, I haven't looked into that coding, all right. Um, I should. Maybe I should. Maybe that would be really cool to find something out about that. But... I will tell you that you know it's it's in a lot of, it's in old it's in ancient writing it's been hidden now I, I'm I, like I said listen you know what I'm gonna I'm about to tell you that Jack and the Beanstalk is one such story you know um I watched a couple of different stories there's many varieties you know when something's been around for they say like for you know thousands of years a couple of thousand or more years that it takes on different you know takes changes in here and there you know well I would say if if this were like scripture the thing is is you just don't want to screw around with it so what you have is you you have um, you have text that bears the same stories that you would find in uh, Greek myths and Bible stories as well as uh, you know how some of these couldn't have made it in there I don't know why or how it is that, that you know but this is what you would find in our Bibles believe it or not this is kind of stuff so what she winds up with is that this story here comes about you know so I, I, the whole story is about Jack and the Beanstalk but they introduced the idea that it's really that they're living in this little house, and it's the mother's, uh, the mother's milk cow, and her name is Milky White, and uh, they mostly they make their money off of her. So it's really about Jack and his mother, and uh, what's really interesting this is when you read into this, you know, in some of the stories he gets married and never lives happily ever after, but in the most all the stories he does not. He remains with his mom, and they think of that as like a kind of an anomaly that he doesn't wind up in the fairy tales like everyone else. But this story had him marrying someone and moving on, so I just think that that was where it was tampered with. Because the idea isn't just finding your love and moving on, we're talking about the mother here. We're talking about a, a boy and his mother. There's, there's no father mentioned at all. So it's really about the individual, okay? And one day, the cow stops giving milk, 
Alright, so, you know, when the cow, you know, a beast is this thing that all of a sudden it's no longer producing, and that was what you were making your money off of, and the wells and the, the monies and things that they are talking about are things that you get from being within yourself. It's not things that you can get from without. So what happens is, is you'll find that the king and the, the, uh, the people that live upstairs, that's mother and father, all right, but at that same time, uh, it's the ogre, all right? It's, um, this is what's ruling the flesh of some kind, whereas, you know, he says, well, mother, don't worry, I'll go out and find some work. And she says, listen, you know, kid, you're useless. You know, we've, done, we've already went that round. <laughs> We're going to have to sell her, <laughs> get something back for her. You know, being that she was supposedly the best milk cow in the area, you know, and she also was good for meat, you know, good for meat, you understand? So it was just really interesting. So she, he said, she sent him off to sell this in the market, get some money, maybe they'll open up a little shop or do something. And before he even gets there, a man stops him along the way and asks him, say, Jack, what are you doing there? You know, and Jack's, whoa, you already know my name, type of thing, you know, what is that? Well, he says, um, do you know what five beans looks like? You know, and he held his hands out and he says, yeah, you have two in each hand and one in your mouth. And he called him as sharp as a needle. So if you think about it, the eye of the needle and all this stuff, you know, this is talking, they actually are representing the number five, which is your skin. So what he wants to do is he wants to take the cow off or his hands and give him these five beans, these five magic beans. And what is he going on? Oh, go on about yourself. I got, I got, no, I can't do this. He says, but you don't understand that if you took these, if you took the beans, which will represent your skin, and then you, then you plant them in the dirt, which is, you know, to, to give it up, you know, then by morning they will have grown and reached up to the sky. And of course these five beans represent your five senses, and this is what you want to put down in order to, you know, to get this, this Kundalini effort to work. So, you know, his mom gets super mad. She goes, how much did you get for that? Did you get $5? Did you get $10? 15 No? 20 What is it? You know, so if you add all those up, that adds up to 14 so that's 5 So it's another 5 Fool! Idiot! You dolt! You know, and she went, take that, take that, take that. So there's your six. And she threw the beans out the window. Do you understand? That's seven. That's the opposite side of one of these stories. It's the opposite side. So she throws the beans out the window. And she tells him, you go off to sleep. I'm not going to feed you anymore. You're not going to get fed water. Go to bed. So, you know, while he is sleeping, you know, he's thinking about what he's done. And so what has happened is, is uh, he wakes up, he wakes up early in the morning and the room is a little different, you know, the lighting and all is different. He looks out his window and he has seen that that, in fact, the guy didn't lie at all. These things have created this giant stalk that had not too far outside of his window. And his room is upstairs in the house. All right, so remember now, he's the messenger in the story, so, you know, he's... The one is, he would be um, Mercury, he'd be Jesus, he'd be the something, but uh, he's got to do something to, so that he can bring things back and forth. He needs to open up that pathway in his mind. He needs to get rid of the ogre, and he needs to rob him of his goods first. And um, so, the way the story goes is that when he jumped out of the window, it would go, he climbed, and 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 he climbed. That's six climbs until he reached the sky. He reached a road that went as straight as a dart, and walking along it, and walked along, two walks along. So when people repeat themselves, you have to understand that that's part of the story. At its end, a tall house and a tall woman. He went up to her and said, breakfast? He asked hungrily, you know, and boldly. And uh, he says, you know, breakfast you want, breakfast you'll be if my, my husband catches you here. He'll make, he'll, uh, he likes little boys broiled and toast, broiled and toasted. <clears throat> broil me, die, I'd rather broil than die of hunger. 
Uh, so, you know, being seeing that the woman wasn't half bad, and as he got half finished, you know, she gave him some bread, some cheese, and a jug of milk. See, when 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 we cross this line, when we cross over, when we get to six, this is the well. You've come to the well, and usually this is where you get fed. Someone comes in and gives you something in the seventh part of the story. And I wanted you to understand that uh, the fool, the idiot, all these have been following in line as a number, the number system that we have. It's just absolutely beautiful. All right, so um, half bad, half finished. That makes one. And well, anyways, we get, um, what you get is, remember, you're split in half. The, 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 the part of you that's going up is in, is, in, um, is, is in spirit. There's a solid part of you someplace else, the other half of you, all right? Right, and in these stories, what happens is, is you, the, they really don't, they're not in the same place at the same time, Jack and this ogre, all right? But between the two moms, the mothers and the tall woman upstairs is at front of the gate. She stands in front of the, you know, at the, at the, at the uh, entrance, the doorstep of a tall house. Well, what happens is, um, as soon as he got just halfway through the food there, they noticed the house started rocking, and they heard this thump, thump, thump. All right. He starts showing up. He hides, or she hides him in the oven. And he comes in and smelling. He's got three, he's got three colts wrapped around his uh, belt, and he slings them on to the table and tells her to cook him a couple of them up. All right. For breakfast. And he says, Mmm, what's that smell? Fee fi fo fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be him alive or be him dead, I'll have his bones to grind my bed bread. The wife covered for Jack and sent him out cleaning up for breakfast. So, you know, he pretended she says, You know, that was I think that was that boy, that's that's the smell left over from the boy you ate last night. You know, I think that's what it is. Talked him out of it, sent him to go clean up before breakfast. And Jack sat off, and the woman says, wait, wait until he falls asleep. You know, after he has breakfast, he usually falls far, far fast asleep. So before that happens, he asks her to come bring bring some money, or I think he actually goes and get it himself. He gets two big old bags of, of, of gold coins. Sets them on the table. He sits there and plays with it for a little while, and he falls fast asleep. So Jack creeps out. And on his way out, he stops by the table, grabs one of those bags, and takes off with it. And as he gets to the end of the road, he tosses it over the side. The coins land in his mother's garden while he makes his way down safely. So he and his mom, they live off of this for some time. and uh, But eventually, that ran out. You know, as all good things, you know. Oh, shit. As, as, as all good things do, they don't last forever. That's a good part of the story. He's going to have to go up and get some more. Evidently, it's going to have to take two. This was his first try. First try is talking about, you know, he's uh, the, the money that comes down gives them wealth. That's about this idea of uh, being going from poor, which is having no connection to God, going to having wealth, having some connection with God, and knowing where to go to get it, okay? So, um, once the coins were gone, he had to go and do it again. So he climbed up the second time. This time he climbed down. Wait, uh, let's see. One morning he rose up early. This is the way most of the stories start. Remember the sunrise and that idea of, you know, before the dawn. Later on, you'll know that that's the red dawn. All right. Uh, he climbed, he climbed, he climbed, he climbed, he climbed, he climbed, he climbed. Six more climbs he did. And he's seen the woman standing up there again, bold as brass. He comes up and says, well, oh, 
I'm so hungry. Would you feed me? She says, you know, weren't you that guy that came up here the last time? Ever since then, my, my husband's, my man has been missing one of his golden sacks, you know. Or what, what is it, sacks of gold? He says, you know, hmm, troubles me. I know something about that, but I, I, I'm just so famished. I, I can't, I just, I, I just can't talk until you feed me. So being curious, she fed him breakfast. I right, got him all going, but as soon as he, he was going really slow, he wanted to take his time. He really didn't want to tell her anything, but he only got like a couple of bites in until he heard thump, 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 you know? But I think this time you only got two thumps out of it. Thump, thump. And the wife hit Jack in the oven, and the same stuff happened as before. The whole thing, you know, it must be in your mind. Go wash your hands. Come back here for breakfast when you're done. So when he came back in this time around, he says, Wife, I want to go in there and bring me my hen. Bring me my hen that lays the golden eggs. Alright? The wife did this. Put the, ta put the chicken put the chicken on the, uh, on the table, said, and he laid, said, lay. And it laid it in, just like that. Wow, beautiful job. So he sat there for a little bit, and then he just fell asleep in a deep sleep. And as he started snoring, the place started shaking again. Of course, this is when Jack starts to make his way out. And as he goes towards the, the table, he grabs the chicken and runs for the door. And as he gets just outside the door, it makes a little squawk. And the chicken, and the, and the ogre opens up, or wakes up. The ogre wakes up. Can't see anything around. He yells for his wife, What have you done with my chicken? And he could only hear him say, What chicken? What are you talking about? As he scampers on down with his, with his booty in his hand. All right? That's what happens with this. All right? So we're going to pause here just for a moment because what he's gotten in here is this is number two, the second time. What he's done is he's gotten something that makes God, makes God when you can call it that on command you can do it so this is the, the number two is God's creation you went from introduction of the one and now we're into the two and now now you can make it yourself now this is God made you you know this idea of you got the chicken which is the animal and now you've got the other part of you that can lay the golden egg this is two we're gonna have to combine these on the third part, which is like the other stories, but we had the other the, of harmony. We need to have something where all four things in the world, and I know I gave it up just now, but, you, but just to help in your ear the way it works. All right? Well, that wasn't going to be enough. They wanted to go up one more time. Don't you know that's how it works? Everything works in three. And that third phase, that first time, is any time that the number three comes in, there's a divine intervention. Something wonderful is going to happen. So knowing before, straight on, it is not going to go away. He's got he's to do something different this time. So hiding in a bush, he waited until the wife came out to draw some water. And he slipped past the door and got into a copper kettle. Not long after, he heard thump, thump, thump. And in came the ogre and the wife. All right. fee fi fo fum I smell him, wife. I smell him. Do you, dearie? It's as if, uh, it's as she says, uh, if it's that one who took your gold, I bet he's in the oven. So they went to see. Not there. The wife scolds her man for not knowing the difference between the smell of a dead man and a and a live man. Said so, now this was from the guy that you that you did the other day. I just know it. And scold him. He sat down kind of you know begrudgingly and he went to eat his breakfast. But you know he kept looking around and searching you know the drawers and the and the cupboards looking for 
whatever it is in there, you know. This is the search going on, okay? That's so cool. Well, he gave up, and, and as he sat down at his table, he asked his wife, he says, go bring me my golden harp. So she brought it, and, it's, and he said, sing. And with that command, it started to sing. And it sang until he fell asleep. Well, Jack lifted the copper lid and slipped out oh so like a mouse and creeped across the floor on all fours, his hands and his knees. He crawled up to the table and he grabbed the golden harp and he made a dash for the door. But as he was going, the, the harp yelled, Master, Master! And the ogre woke up to see Jack exiting the door. And he got up and he got in pursuit. And there was this struggle. It seemed as if they were going to catch each other on that small, on that long path. But then he saw that Jack kind of disappeared in front of his eyes. Getting up closer and to the edge of the, he saw that this was, that Jack was 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 hurrying down the beanstalk. And he was thinking, oh, I don't know if I should trust this as a ladder. And so that little stall of time gave Jack the lead. And as he was making it down the ways. He felt that the, the ogre jumped to it and the whole vine shook to his weight. He hollered down to his mother and he says, Mother, Mother, get us, get the axe, get the axe. You know, this is four. And as she came out with the axe, she froze with fear as she got within two meters of her, two feet or two something just with fear, just frozen with fear. So Jack jumps down, grabs it with his own hands and gives it one whack and he knocks it half, half out, you know, or in half. The ogre felt this, there was a shake and a rattle and he stopped what he was doing and he looked down to see what was going on and he saw Jack with the ax and he continued on down with him and so Jack gave him another BAM! While he was in that pause, cut it into two. And the ogre came tumbling down and broke his crown. And the vine came tumbling after. And his mother and he and his mother lived happily ever after and were rich beyond belief. And of course you can say that he may have gotten found a princess and gotten married and lived happily ever after. Well, they might have done that, but that's not the way it works out, really. This would be like me. You know, um, the idea that, you know, that's, I'm, a, I'm all alone. It's like you. It's like all the stories. It's really not about anyone else but a single individual that finds this place inside them where the riches are, you know, and, you know, regardless of what you use as the Kundalini, you'll find that that's really beautiful storytelling. That you didn't hear any sevens in this, but you, you know, which, what it was, the seven was, you know, being fed today. This was, you know, the, the banquet of some kind when it's the seven and eight, when she gets through the door, seven, when she comes up to the road, is six, you know, but he still has to travel the road till he gets to seven, and when she opens the door and lets him in, that's seven. The banquet becomes eight, and nine becomes a new world, so, uh, or new, the newer consciousness. But he had to do this three times to kill this ogre. That's the killing of the, of the old consciousness and allowing the new conscious now to come in. They're no longer poor. So when you notice about someone being poor in the Bible, that's why they said, you know, a rich man has a harder time getting through the, the eye of the needle, which is a part of the story because he says, you know, you know, the, 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 whoever this man was that sold him the beans had two in one hand, two in another, and one in his mouth. And Jack saw this ahead of time through it and was said that he had eyes that were sharp as a needle. So the idea is if you once you grab those fives, you have that idea of going through the eye of the needle. And because he was poor. So the idea of being a rich man is that you have this this better side to you. 
working in working order. All right. So, anyways, I thought that was really, really cool. You know, I think my telephone is listening to me for some reason. It goes off and on whenever I start to get a little louder. Um, certain things that to work for. What I was telling you was uh, this was this part. The story came in three parts. Uh, the first was to give you wealth, to show you wealth. That's the first one. Uh, it, it was actually an introduction, actually, to where the where the where the honey pot is. All right. Second was the chicken that laid the golden egg. So that would be a creation, and you know we're in duality. We we have this is what that would be. So it's now you now you have yourself. You have yourself, and now you can go out there and lay these eggs yourself. And that's where the third comes in when you are in harmony, when you have the four worlds in control, in your control, does things have a, um, you know, that's what puts them to sleep, is the heart, that, that, uh, uh, the, the music that soothes the savage beast. So, you know, look at all these interesting things that we live around that actually have more meanings than, 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 than God, you know. Um, but uh, let's see, we have Jacob's Ladder, you know. Um, we have the Tree of Good and Evil. Um, we have uh, the Sycamore Tree, so, you know, got to climb the Sycamore Tree. We have... Um, uh, I already said Jacob's Ladder. Um, it's the seven daughters. It's the seven hundred wives of Solomon. Um, you know, it's just this uh, this 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 idea that that now we have a beanstalk. We have trees that represent this with the uh, with the roots actually going into the into the air into heaven and with the branches laying on the top of earth to symbolize where we are really getting our real food from and I just thought this was really cool I just thought it was and you know I I have someone's oh you know this is does not belittle these infant this is just showing you how beautiful these these stories are and how at one time they were it was really important it seemed as if everybody knew this, or, you know, it's very interesting how close they all come, and it's, I wonder, do you really think that that is a coincidence? Do you, do you think hearing that it comes from a, a child's story, that it, that it doesn't mean that it's not important, do you know? No. No, these things are thousands of years old. These things here are just as old, just as old as Bible scriptures and stuff like that. Just as old and just as cool, just as cool. All right, so anyways, that was our, uh, what do you call it? Do, 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 you know, it'd be like, you know, the Rocky and Bull Wrinkle Show. I'll come up with something where, you know, we can just kind of take these on piece by piece. But, you know, I don't always like to be heavy with the God and all that, you know. But th that's probably what you would think was, you know, with Scripture, it's heavier because, you know, blood and people have been killed over that. Whereas no one's killed themselves, you know, over these these uh, nursery rhymes, you know. no None that we know of, you know. But uh, they certainly tell more story than meets the eye. Love you. It's the God's honest truth.